get to talk to everybody and let you hear my voice for once because I know all you do is, you know, you see me playing my guitar online. Um, um, that came about actually uh, last year, last summer. I was just sitting in the house and I just decided to make a video and, and post it on Facebook. And, you know, people, I got a good response from it. And, uh, you know, for the past year, that's what I've been doing just to get my name out there and to let everybody know that that I'm here. Um, as far as uh, me playing guitar and how it all started, it started uh, when I was probably, I'll say seven years old. Um, I remember my uncle taking me to uh, a record store in Morgantown and he bought the Kiss Alive 2 album came out and he also bought the first Van Halen album. And I, you know, I was seven years old and I remember going back to my grandmother's house and, you know, he had some of those big 1970s headphones and uh, I think Eruption was playing and he put the headphones on my head and I heard that and it was just, I don't know, it's hard to describe. Once I heard that, I was just, I was just, uh, my breath was taken away. It's, it's unexplainable. It was rock and roll from then on. And then um, I grew up in a musical family. You know, my mom played piano. She played the French horn. She listened to classical music. She listened to 70s funk. You know, she she just loved music. And she gave piano lessons also. And my dad could just play any instrument that you put in front of him. And my mom played in a band with my uncle. And there was always guitars and a drum set in the house. And I would always ask my cousins who played in the band with my uncle. I would be like, you know, could you guys show me something on the guitar? You know, I really want to learn how to play, you know. Being seven or eight years old, they were like pushing me away. Like, we don't have time to show you or you really don't want to do this. You know, not really taking me serious and not knowing how bad I really wanted to do it. I remember, uh, you know, going to church with my grandmother and everybody in my family played, you know, instruments in the band in church. And then I had my grandmother and cousins and other relatives who sang. So pretty much my whole life as a kid was surrounded by music. Um, and it wasn't until I uh, I moved to Northern Virginia that uh, my mom got me a guitar. And I was probably, at this time, probably about 12, 13 years old. You know, she bought me an acoustic guitar from, uh, from Vitamins Music Store in Landover Mall. It used to be downstairs in Landover Mall. And that was the first guitar that I got. And I didn't really play it that much um, because I was out doing other things. I think, like, back then, breakdancing was real popular. And I kind of lived in, a, you know, in the inner city, kind of. So I still listen to the hard rock stuff. But so, as far as, you know, actually playing, I really didn't play. And uh, it wasn't until I was 17 years old we moved up to Woodbridge, Virginia. And uh, that summer... My mom was like, I'm going to send you out to your uncle's house. He wants you to come out because he was stationed in the Air Force out in Spokane, Washington. And that summer, it was the summer of 1988. And it was when the Monsters of Rock came out. Um, it was like Kingdom Come, um, let's see, Dawkin, Metallica, The Scorpions, and Van Halen. And this is the first concert I ever went to in my whole entire life. And uh, after seeing that, it, it just it, it just blew my mind. And I remember my uh, my uncle had written me, rented me a uh, a Kramer guitar that summer just to just to play around on. And you know, the day after that concert, I was flying back to Virginia, and I asked my uncle, I was like, "Can I please, can I please have this guitar?" And he was like, "Yes." So I, I had a guitar and I had a uh, Rockman soloist. So whenever I got back to Virginia, I stayed in my room. I didn't go out with my friends. I didn't hang out. I wasn't out doing stupid shit. I stayed in my room and I played because, you know, like I said, that's just something I've always wanted to do. And uh, probably a few months after I got back, I started going to a music store on Route 1 in uh, Woodbridge, Virginia called Music City. And there was a bass player that worked there. His name was Dave Krieger, which he played with Michael Fath. And he later on went on to go play with Foghat. Um, he was just one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life as far as just being encouraging to me and seeing my abilities early on. And he was like, you know, we have a guitar teacher here. He's really, really good. And, you know, I want, I want you to meet him. And he was just like, man, you know, he plays the Van Halen and Dock and stuff. And, you know, and uh, so the next week I came in there and there was a guitar teacher. His name was Mike Hamill. 
and he was just he was flawless. I mean, just with with the Van Halen and Dark and stuff and all of that back in '88. I mean, he was just freaking killing it. He was the man in the Washington D.C. area and Maryland and Virginia. He he's I mean, still to this day, I've seen him play, and he's freaking awesome. Um, my jaw drops still as a grown man watching him do his thing. Then after, you know, maybe like maybe two years, my mom was killed in a car wreck. So that kind of made me feel a certain way about certain things. You know what I mean? It was just like, wow. But that was that was a lot to take in, you know, being a 19 year old kid, because when you're 19 years old, you're, you're not grown. But um, there was one thing I knew for sure. My mom believed in my abilities. You know, she would go to the music stores with me whenever I was first starting out playing. And these guys that I'm speaking of would tell her, you know, he's only been playing a year and he's doing stuff that I know people been playing 20 years can't do. So that right there was a big encouragement of her even taking the time and, you know, the interest in her kid playing an instrument. It was never, ever turn that guitar off. It's too late at night. Turn it down. I don't want to hear it. It was never like that. It was encouraged. Because she saw my abilities as where I was never a good student in school. You know, I wasn't that kid. I always made bad grades. I, that just wasn't my thing. And the thing about that is my mom was always focused on the music. You know, I mean, it was always. Even if the teacher was standing in my face talking to me or trying to teach me something, I would be looking at her face and looking at her mouth. But at the same time, I didn't hear a thing she said because I would always hear rhythms in my head. Never guitar. It was always drum patterns. Always. Even to this day, I hear that. But uh, like I said, I was never, ever a good student, man. I always got, you know, got in trouble for making bad grades all the time. You know, just wasn't a good student at all. But, uh, you know, like I said, my mom encouraged me with the guitar because she saw something in me that I was good at, you know. And that encouragement is what has, you know, carried me on through the years. Just thinking of her looking at me like you are excellent at that. You know, I could just hear her saying that mm -hmm. and just being totally enthralled by what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And that, that's a big help. I mean, any, any of you guys that have kids out there who play a musical instrument, I mean, you need to encourage that. You really do because, you know, these kids could be out doing some things that, you know, they don't have any business doing or going out here getting in trouble or so have you. But if they're in there in their room, totally engulfed in playing music or playing a musical instrument, that's something you don't have to worry about. So I'm glad that my mom, you know, never complained about me playing because I could have been that kid out there doing things, you know? So, uh, later on down the line, um, I'd say after my mom passed, I, uh, for two years, I just, I just played, I just played that. That's all I could do to keep my mind off of, you know, what, what had occurred. Because when I'm playing my guitar, I'm not thinking about anything else but that. There's nothing else that comes into that world besides playing that guitar. So I would have to say that, you know, that guitar has saved my life also. You know, it, it really has. And that's what it does. And that just goes to show you the love of music and what the love of music can do. You know, um, it can actually, you know, it can, it can save your life. It really can. Um, I would say... A year or so down the line, I started writing some material. And, and during that time, I moved back to Morgantown, West Virginia, just to be around my family and be around familiar surroundings. Um, and while I was there, I met up with a, I was down at the local music store there and I met, uh, I was just sitting there playing. And, uh, you know, there's this guy in the music store and he's, you know, you know, he's, he's talking to the owner. He's, he asked him, he's like, man, I need a, I need a guitar player. You know, because he was in a band and he had just lost, you know, he just broke up with that band or whatever. So he says, I need a guitar player. And the guy, owner of the music store, I'm sitting there playing. He turns around and points at me, you know. And the singer, his, his name is Jimmy Fox. He uh, he kind of he kind of opened the doors for me as far as um, being able to get out there and show my abilities. You know, um, this was the first band that I was ever in. So I kind of. You know, I wrote some guitar parts and then the bass player, he wrote, you know, the uh, the lyrics, you know, and it kind of just all came together. And there were a couple of, uh, you know, big acts for the area that were uh, interested in having us open up a few shows for them. And uh, there was one band that were called Brick Mistress and there was another band called Dofka. And they were both really, really good, tight, solid metal units. 
back in the day. This is back in the early 90s. So, of course, it was really intimidating for me being in my first band to go up against, you know, such a caliber of musicians. You know what I mean? It was just like, um, you know, I'm shaking in my shoes, you know, getting ready to go out on stage and play in front of, you know, guys of that caliber. So it, it was pretty nerve wracking. But I did it, got past it, got over it and uh, just continued playing throughout the years. Um, you know, a band here, a band there, um, traveling around everywhere, got to tour, got to see how the side of me heavy metal lives that nobody knows about. You know, everybody thinks sometimes that it's this big party and it's the fame and the fortune and the glory and all of that. And, you know, you kind of get a wake up call when you're really there and you see some of the bands that, you know, you grew up listening to or some of the bands that you would see on MTV and you're just like, geez. It's nothing like that. It's nothing like that at all. So one thing for sure, man, you got to, if you want to do this and you, and you play metal or you play whatever style that you play, you got to do it for the love, you know, because if you're doing it for the big prize at the end of the rainbow or whatever, man, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. I'm just saying it's, you know, it, that's a big illusion. You know, it's a really big illusion. So, uh, I mean, more than anything, just do it for the love. I'd say maybe, a year or so later down the road, I got to a point to where I wasn't really in the public view as far as playing anymore. I just kind of just kind of laid back a little bit. And I was working at a music store that was at the mall. And it was one of the worst kind of music stores, too. It wasn't a music store that sold, like, nice guitars and stuff like that. It sold, like, you know, pianos and organs and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, they had a few guitars, but it wasn't nothing like, you know, no Kramers or Jacksons or ESPs or anything like that. I would sit in this music store every day just wondering what I was going to do next or what my next musical venture was going to be. And, um, you know, I would sit there and just play around with the guitars that they had, you know, watching people walk through the mall, you know, totally boring, you know, play the demos on the, uh, <laughs> play the demos on the organs and the, in the electric pianos and, and stuff like that. And one day I'm sitting in the store and I'm just, playing some scales on a, on a guitar. And, you know, this guy walks into the music store and he's like, he's like, that's really good. And then he was like, you ever thought about going to college? I was like, no, <laughs> you know, I was just like, no, I just, you know, and he was, and then he said, you know, just sitting here listening to you play, I think you should come over to the university and do an audition. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, I'm not that good. I'm not that confident a player to even, sit in front of anybody like that to even attempt to do an audition on that level because I've always been that type of player, just never confident, just never satisfied with my skill level. And I'm like that to this day, you know? So for the next week or so, he came back every day. I mean, just every day and was hounding me and hounding me and hounding me. And finally, I was like, I was like okay, I'm gonna come over and do an audition. I don't play classical guitar. I told him that. He was like, well, can you, can you get one and, you know, practice on it? You know, I was like, yeah. I think there was like two months away before the audition, right? So I practiced. Well, I'm not even going to say I practiced. I made up this classical thing in my head, just totally made up, just totally guessing, totally. It was a big guess. It was time for me to do my, my audition. So I go over to the university. There's a big long line of kids just coming out of high school. I'm 26 years old at the time. You know, they're just, just fresh out of high school, 17, 18 year olds, you know, big long line. So I'm standing out there. I'm just like, okay. So it's finally my turn to go in there. So, and there's like, you're sitting in a semicircle of like the dean of the department of music, the piano instructor, the violin instructor. I think the cello instructor was there and my guitar teacher. And keep in mind, they're not really nice people. I mean, they are nice, but as far as being uh, outgoing and friendly and, you know, welcoming you and all of that, it was nothing like that. They were really, really, really stiff, okay? I sit down and I play what I had totally made up in my head. It was totally made up, okay? And the guitar teacher says, play an A minor seventh chord. Kind of cut my eyes at him because I told him I didn't read music or didn't know any theory or anything like that. And I'm thinking to myself, why would you put me on the spot like that? You know, in front of them, of all people. 
you know. And uh, he goes over to the piano that's sitting in the room. There's a grand piano in there, full size. He hits an A minor seventh chord on that piano. Once I heard it, I played it right back to him. And they were like, okay, thank you. Thank you for coming. We'll give you a call in about four to six weeks to let you know if you made it in. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I knew I shouldn't have came here. Now I feel like an idiot. You know, I feel like I've embarrassed myself. I shouldn't even came over here. So I'm packing up my guitar and uh, I walk out in the hallway. And no sooner I get out in the hallway, the guitar teacher peeps his head out the door. He's like, hey, Warren, can you hold on for like five minutes? I was like, yeah. So he comes out of the classroom. He's like, walk down the hallway with me. I was like, okay. So we go in this room and he's like, sit down. I sat down. He was like, he said, congratulations. I was just like, what? And he's like, you made it in. Congratulations. I was like, no way. He's like, yeah. And I said, you know, when I was in there playing, those instructors, they didn't show any emotion. They didn't show an interest in what I was doing. They didn't show anything. I said, what did they say when I walked out of that room? He said, when you walked out of that room, their mouths dropped on the floor. He said, they could not believe that you had the technical ability that you had and had no type of form, formal training whatsoever. He's like, they were just, they were just enthused by it. They were just, you know, they were flabbergasted, you know? And uh, <clears throat> so I got to walk around WVU being introduced as this is our new virtuoso. You know, it, it was nice. It was a good experience. Um, I stayed there for two and a half years. I just found it, to be honest, no, I'll put it this way. You know how you have an artist that paints, and he's painting a picture, but he needs somebody else to paint that picture with him. But being that it's his vision, you cannot go outside of these lines that I have instructed you to paint. It's kind of hard for you to feel somebody else's vision when you're, you know, when you have a creative mind also. So that's what I found whenever I was in school. You know, you're sitting there playing through classical pieces and playing in a guitar ensemble and you're playing somebody else's music, but you can't go outside of those lines. And just not being able to use your own creativity, it, it, it's, it's, it's bounding. You feel bound. So that's where the interest went away as far as doing it you know, um, on a scholastic level, you know, I just totally lost interest because there, there was just no feel. There was no feel for it for me whatsoever. It was going through the motions. Yeah. I learned some technique and things of that nature, but I didn't learn anything that I didn't know before I got there, except how to read music and understand the language. And that right there was, you know, it was, it was, it was a humbling experience as well because I had to go back and forget everything that I already knew and start from the very beginning, you know, from the very beginning of do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, and what that actually means. And that was humbling because I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you know, I want to fly, you know what I mean? I want to, you know, play like I play, but I couldn't do that because I was inside of that, you know, I was inside of that bubble and I had to, like I said, I had to forget everything that I already knew and start from the beginning. But it came back to, you know, I would sit and practice these pieces for hours. Come back to, you know, once I actually figured it out and some of the chord changes and the scale patterns that I was using, you know, I would slap myself in the head and be like, I've been playing this for years, but just didn't know the literary term for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Like I said, that was a humbling, humbling experience, and I totally enjoyed it, but it, it just wasn't my thing. Um, but I would not discourage any of you kids out there, if you have a chance to do something with music or, you know, you have an opportunity like that, by all means, take it. Because like I said earlier, I was never, ever a very good student, and college was the furthest thing from my mind, and look what happened. It just kind of fell in my lap. So... I would definitely encourage that. Um, after I went to college, uh, I lost a brother. Me and my brother were like inseparable. I mean, just, you know, he was the older brother. I'm the youngest. 
you know, and, you know, what he thought of me was a big deal to me. You know, um, I can remember him going to my first show whenever I played and, you know, he heard me play and he saw the response from the people. And after the show, you know, we're riding home and he turns and looks at me. It's just like, he's like, man, he said, I had no idea that you could play that guitar like that. He was just like, I thought you were back in your room making noise all those years because I was never, ever playing a full song. You know, I was learning scales or just playing scales along to cassette tapes, you know, just trying to, you know, find my way around. Yeah, exactly. And that's what he heard me doing all the time. You know, he never heard me, you know, put a song together and, and, and arrange it and actually go out and perform a whole song. And he, you know, that meant the world to me right there that he looked at me in that manner. And, you know, when I lost him, I went into a state of depression. Once again, the music bought me out of, you know, I just can't, I just can't praise the music enough because it's brought me out of some places that, you know, would probably break the average man. And that guitar is just, it's a part of me. It's part of my being. It's part of my soul. It's a part of my life. And that's something that I would never, ever let go of regardless. You know, it's just, it's, it's just, it means that much to me. And, you know, I know you've seen throughout this year of me posting videos and, you know, just day after day after day after day after day. Well, nobody knows who I am. You know, that was the only way I could get people to know who I am. I don't play in a band. OK, I'm not her playing every weekend. I have, you know, I haven't toured since 2009, you know, so nobody knew or nobody knows who I am. So that was the only way that I could introduce myself to everybody. And the response from everybody has been overwhelming. And I just want every last one of you guys to know that I truly and deeply appreciate every kind word that's said. And I appreciate some of the negative things that are said too, you know, because, you know, that keeps you grounded and, you know, it gives you something to shoot for, you know, it keeps you humble. And that's a good thing in this game because one thing I learned early was, you know, there's a thousand guys out there that are way better than I am. So you, the best thing for you to do is to keep it humble and, you know, um, if you see somebody doing something that sparks your interest, then, hey, go over there and make contact with that person and be like, hey, how did you do that? Show me how you did that. Instead of, you know, hating, you know, instead of hating that person or having something negative to say, you know, you know, you know, go over and introduce yourself. And, you know, I'm pretty sure nine times out of 10, that person will be more than happy to show you some guidelines of how you could get to be in that place. Um, let's see back to my story, 2009, I see a, uh, I see an ad on MySpace. You guys do remember MySpace, right? Yes. Okay. There was a ad for a band out of Cleveland. They were looking for a guitar player and me being the person that I am, I'm going to go, you know, wherever I have to go. It's just no question in my mind. If I got to get up and go and somebody's like, hey, we want you to be here. Or we want you to be there. And the the situation looks promising. Hey, I'm on it, you know, because it's not going to happen in Morgantown. I figured that out a long time ago. So I get a hold of these guys in Cleveland. They're, they're a band called Years of Fire, which the founding member of that band was a uh, one of the founding members of the band Chimera, which they were from Cleveland also. His name is Jason Hager. And... Uh, you know, we talk and I send him some of my material and, you know, he, he's cool with it. And he says, he's like, you want to come up and, you know, an audition or whatever? And I was like, yeah. So this was in December of like 2009. Actually, no, <laughs> it was in December of 2008. So I can remember getting in my car. One of the windshield wipers didn't work on the driver's side at that. And I'm driving up to Cleveland. It's freaking snowing. I mean, it's snowing like crazy. And uh, so I get there and go upstairs into the practice room and unpack my guitar. And He had sent me some, some of their material previously. So I learned their material and went up there and played. And they were just like, you got the job. I was like, cool. You know, so playing with those guys was awesome because it was more on uh, some of the newer metal type sound, you know, not so much of the 
the classic metal like I play. But it, it was it was it was an eye opener. It was something different to do, and I I, I liked the sound. You know, it was heavy. It it was tuned down. You know, um, and we got to play some shows. You know, we played Peabody Peabody's Down Under. Geez, I I can't count on two hands how many times we played there. But it was awesome, and we got to play with some you know we got, with some big names. There was, let's see, Pitch Black Forecast. Um, we did a show with Mushroom Head, bands like that. You know what I mean? And got to meet some of those guys. And you know the response was always good from, you know, everybody that I came in contact with. You know, you know um, the kids, you know, sixteen, seventeen. You know, for them to come up to you and. You know, I'm from West Virginia. I'm not even from Cleveland. Or for you to go to Buffalo or for you to go to Detroit or for you to go to Columbus, Ohio, and you play a show and you don't know anybody from Adam and they don't know you. And, you know, after you're done playing and these kids are, you know, want your autograph and they want your guitar pick and things of that nature, that's that's the most overwhelming thing about playing music. You know, just just for that one moment in time that, you know, I can take your mind off of your daily troubles while I'm up there on that stage doing my thing. That's what I'm here for. You know, I'm not looking to be, you know, the next guitar guard or be better than anybody or, you know, want to compete or any of that. That's not me at all. You know, I'm here to make people feel good with what I do. That's why I was put here. I wasn't here for anything else but that, you know, I don't have the life of, you know, a career or, you know, anything of that nature. I don't have the nicest things, you know, anything like that. You know, I've sacrificed all of those things for this music and to play my music, you know? Um, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people get hung up on, you know, their job and having a nice car and a nice ride and, you know, and things like that. And I'm, you know, I'm here for the music and that's it. You're definitely humble. Hey man, you gotta be in this game. You have Definitely to be. Humble. So that's pretty much my story, guys. And you know, I'm just right now. I'm at a point to where it's time for this music to move forward. From the responses I'm getting, people love it. So right now, I'm calling on the best musicians out there that want to do something different and do something that's not the norm and do something to make metal stand on its feet again. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those musicians. I don't want to play with another band. I don't want to play in anybody else's band. It's time for Warren Hughes to do Warren Hughes. And I'm looking for the musicians who want to go and take this ride with me. And if you want to take this ride with me, hit me on my Facebook page. I would be happy to have you. But that's my vision right now. So... That's put, it. Put your web address out. My web address. Warren, Warren Hughes at right. Facebook. Warren Hughes at Facebook.com. Just, just look me up. Listen to some of my stuff. Go on my Reverb Nation page. Warren Hughes Reverb Nation. Warren Hughes at SoundCloud. I have music posted there, things that I've created at home. Um, I also have a song up. It's called Valley of the Damned. It features a great friend of mine. His name is Greg Wagner. He's a phenomenal vocalist. So... That is one person I know that I am going to keep. But I am looking for a drummer. I am looking for a bass player. And possibly another guitar player. But that's... I'll just go along and be your roadie. Hey. <laughs> that would be nice. A roadie. Somebody to, you know, carry my stuff yeah. and string up my guitar. No, I don't know about all okay. that. Okay, well, I'm just I don't like, know how to string up a guitar. I was never taught that. Right. Warren Hughes, guys... He has been one of the best guys to have on here so far since I've been here. Make it a point to look up his Facebook. Make it a point to listen to him on Reverb Nation. The story with this man is I was sent a music clip like a month ago. Burn, you've got to listen to this. You've got to hear this guy. And I was like, yeah, whatever. So I play him. And I didn't see him. I didn't see who the man was. All I did was heard the guitar. And I'm the type of person, if I come to listen to your band, and I come there for that purpose, if I have a moving or a feeling in me, I'm going to come meet you. I'm going to come meet you, I'm going to tell you who I am, and I'm going to find out where to see you next. 
This is Bernadette with Extreme Metal Works. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Thank you. Thank you.